this film was very much a bunch of guys living in a house trying to make a film. It, me and Duncan had lived together for like sort of eight or nine years. Um, we were living in a flat in Chelsea with another friend of ours, Barrett Heathcote, who was a VFX um, editor, who was just around all the time whilst we were talking. It was basically like the three of us boshing ideas together. And so, yeah, all three of us were there right from the beginning, getting the story together all the way through, because we were all living in the same house. We were all, we'd been working on everything together previously for like the last however many years, seven or eight years. We'd done always like little low budget indie pop promos, working our way up through commercials and all kinds of things. And my kind of um, role in things really was, um, and there's always the art side of things because I was the guy with the, you know, who does the art, who draws, designs things, does the visual effects. And that was a way that we'd, we'd kind of always worked, but it was a very collaborative, lots of chat going on, because we all live in the same house. You know, it's fun, it was a lot of fun actually. Very, it was, it was what you think it is. When you think of a bunch of guys um, living in a house together trying to make a film, it was that, it was what you think that is. Mm -hmm. We had no expectations at all. We were so caught up in trying to make this thing, because the, the challenges were, you know, there's a lot of challenges against us. And it, it took all of the kind of um, different parts of us to do it like the different things that we could all do to because we didn't have the resources to do it properly so it's like I was covering like you know uh, VFX supervision concept design graphic design all these different things they just kept coming up as jobs it's like mm -hmm. we need some motion graphics on the monitors there's no one to do it so better get on and get it done and it's like fortunately I have the skills to do that so I just stay up all night and get them done it's things like that going on so mm -hmm. yeah we didn't have any expectations because we were so busy making it you know we didn't I don't think you can really, I don't think you can make something and whilst you're doing it, sit back and go, oh, this is, everyone's going to love this. And you get wrapped up in the process. Yeah. The, the, the process consumes, uh -huh. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially yeah. when you're overlapping all these different things because there's that kind of putting out fire thing and there's a constant pressure and stress not having enough money and, I mean, we ran out of money twice when we were filming. It's like, it was brick wall. We were like, we're out of money, we're shutting up tomorrow. That happened to us twice. Wow. You know, that's like, you know, we didn't even... We weren't even completely sure that we'd get to finish the film when we were making it because we had oh. to keep, you know, sort of going that extra bit further. So, yeah, there was no expectations at all. It was more about, like, please let us be able to finish this thing. That was the hope. Uh -huh. It's like, please let us finish. Uh -huh. When we were actually shooting this, uh, there was a moment where Duncan uh, pulled me aside. Uh, Sam's off acting, doing his thing, being great. And Duncan sort of like whispered to me, he's like, is this any good? And I had to honestly say, like, I really don't know, because I like, was so close to it. Don't know, I genuinely don't know. You know, we've been in, in production for months now, and we're, you know, our noses are this far away from this thing, we've got no perspective, no breadth of vision on anything. All I could really sort of say back was that what we really are doing is trying as hard as we can, so we're focused on this and we're trying as hard as we can at it. So ultimately, whether it's any good or not, we don't know right now, we literally don't know. And that's. That can be very stressful if you if you dwell on that, but there's so much work to do it, you know, you don't dwell on it for long. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you know, we're trying as hard as we can and that's all we can really do. So, you know, we'll see. How what was that process going from going from from the story idea to like, okay, this project is gonna happen and we're gonna start making this film? Yeah, well it's a tricky one because the thing that makes a project real is the money. Mm -hmm. That's where the difference um, occurs between some people saying they're going to make a film and some people making a film it's when you get financing so we were really bullish about it really in that we had a real like if you build it they will come kind of mentality I think it wasn't so much they will come it's like if you build it we will make them come <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. We've been working on all these commercials and these like promos and stuff and it was always going to end up in a film because we were we had that kind of <clears throat> um almost naivety where we didn't realise what we couldn't do so mm. we just thought we can do whatever we want and that ended up working for us I mean it's not something that you can count on working every time I guess but that was that was honestly our approach to it you know we just thought well we want to make a film let's make a film what's the problem and obviously it's you know you've got to get the finance in there but we just went around and talked to loads of people and managed to make it work mm. you know there wasn't any kind of special witchcraft or anything tricky that we did you know we didn't yeah. no chickens were harmed in blood pentagrams during the mm -hmm. making of moon you know it was all mm -hmm. very it was all very much what you'd think it was. Mm -hmm. We just we were just so up of it. Um, we were just really bullish about it, and we were, we just knew that we had to get the script right because obviously getting a getting a good script means mm -hmm. that it makes everything else so much easier because people can read it and actually um, like it. You know, mm -hmm. you need to get people on board and you need to get people kind of championing you. So I know it's like a cliche. People say it all comes from the script. The script needs to be good, but honestly, the reason why it's cliche is because it's true. Mm -hmm. And 
one of the things that always baffles me is the amount of people that say that and then don't follow their own advice. Mm -hmm. Lots of people say that and don't do it, and it, it baffles me because it's true. And if you're gonna say that, mm -hmm. do it. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. That if I could give one piece of advice to anybody, it's just make sure you scrub scores. And I know it's cliche, but actually do do that. Don't just say it and go, oh, I've said the thing now. Everybody sounds like I know what I'm talking. You know, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Actually do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's all to do with us kind of um, making the most of the extra things that we could bring to it. It's like, I mean, I always think of this kind of stuff um, with anybody who tends to be at a certain level of being good, they usually tend to bring like a plus one or a plus two skill with them. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, um, I mean, Duncan's plus one skill is writing. He's a director and he writes. Um, you know, I've got plus one skills it's like I'm you know I'm, I can take a nice photograph I can draw I can do graphic design you know I understand the history of it all you know all that. Mm -hmm. so there's all these kind of plus ones that we all kind of bring to bring to the table and the extra kind of um, effort really a lot of it came with us using those plus powers that we had mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. try and max out what we could get uh -huh. So, you know, you do, it's like with the concept art, it's like, okay, I'll do the concept art and I'll work through the concept art and I'll get it done and then I'll do the graphic design to, as a part of the concept art, to uh -huh. finish the concept art and then that becomes a graphic design that then gets transformed into vinyls that get put on the walls and all like that then becomes a set dressing job which results in me being there late at night sticking all these things on the walls and it's like the, the one thing rolls into the other thing by itself and it's just me doing it without anybody needing to say this thing needs to be done. It's just there's no one else to do it, so it's me just grabbing the stuff and going and doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's very much like the spirit of indie film, really, but, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of ways you couldn't operate like that. It's like if you were doing a studio film in America, the unions would just be so pissed off at you. Do you know what I mean? You'd be yeah. like, you're putting us out of work, you know? Yeah. There's all this kind of... There's a, there's a real difference between the kind of... Um, get it done spirit that you need for an indie and the kind of professional measured um nine to five studio environment yeah we had a thing with the set where nothing was really finished until the camera had passed across it because we built the entire set the whole thing was enclosed and when we walked in in the morning you'd go in through the airlock and you'd shut the door and you'd be in there till lunch and you'd come out and blah 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 and so we spent a lot of time inside the set and the whole thing was it was a full 360 environment so it's all enclosed it's got the roof on it you're actually in there and <clears throat> one of the things about it that is that I was so keen on just getting it looking as nice as we could is that when we were filming, you know, you, you set up first day of filming, the camera's over here, it's filming that bit. The rest of it hasn't been covered by a camera yet, so there's still an opportunity to work on it. And slowly over the, over the days, as the days progressed, the, the camera would move across different parts of the set. And so what I would do is basically, once the camera had covered part of the set, I would leave it, but up until then it was fair game and anything I could do to make it look a bit nicer, I would do. And I was doing things like, I had like a cup of coffee and I'd be like rubbing it on the walls to make it all look yellow and aged. And then it wasn't just rubbing coffee on, it had to look right. So I'd be rubbing coffee on and then rubbing the coffee off and then putting a bit more and rubbing, doing all this stuff all over the place and putting some extra bits of vinyl up wherever we had it and all this kind of stuff. And I was really glad I did that. I mean, I was getting some funny looks at the time and people are like, what are you doing? And, you know, why don't you just mm. like sort of, you know, go and have a cup of tea and let everybody get on with what they're doing. And I was like, no, 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 we can make this look better. It needs to look better. And I was really glad I did because there's some bits and when I look at what the... It's like when Gertie first turned up on set, it was mm. just a complete white painted box and it needed vinyl on it, it needed ageing, it needed mucking up. I'm so mm. glad I did that because if I hadn't, it would have just been this white shiny brand new looking box with just smooth white paint on it you know and that just wouldn't have looked right yeah the, the will to make the world real was just part of the nature of building a realistic world but um the uh you know you've got you've got to have your rules with sci-fi and you've got to build a world and you've got to make it believable and you've got to make it stick and not break it and what if you look at a bad sci-fi film it's very often broke it's it's broken its own rules in one way or another it's it's got cracks in it and when you're watching it you can't go with it because you find you're like hang on a minute but what about the thing but I mean at the end of the day you know there's a lot of people out there that want to make films you've got to try and find your voice and try and stand out a little bit um, you've got to focus on the material because there's the, the material puts a glass ceiling on things I think like this is one of the one of the ways that I had to kind of explain the way I felt about Prometheus the script 
you start off with nothing, so you're at the bottom, then the script will kind of take you up to a certain degree of how good the project is. And then what tends to happen is once you go into production and the script's kind of there, everything else will only ever get to the, the height of what the script is at, and it puts like a glass ceiling on things. And so much great work that goes on in films that just doesn't get the attention it deserves because you can have a film that's got like a really crap script or mediocre script and it can have some beautiful sets or beautiful costumes or whatever and they never really get acknowledged as being as beautiful as they are because the film as a whole only ever achieves this. So when you watch the film you come out thinking that the film, like the whole thing is like this whereas individually there can be all these bits of work that could be like much higher than that. And so it puts this kind of ceiling over the perception of the whole film. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that work in that. I mean, actors and actresses are a great example of this. There's so many actors and actresses out there that just haven't got the right role to, um, to kind of really show what they can do. But I think one of the things as, a, as an indie filmmaker is to try and, try and turn things that might be perceived as being like weaknesses or steps backwards and try and find out how you can make that into a strength. Because you, often you can, you know, you can be things like you can, I mean, unfortunately it tends to involve a lot of legwork and a lot of it tends to be about finding people because obviously you need your team. But on one, on one hand you could be sat there and you could be like, okay, I want to make a film. Um, you know, I, I, it's a sci-fi film. Uh, I need to um, get some sets made. I need to get some really cool sets made. I need a production designer. And you could be like, oh God, I don't know any production designers. How's that going to happen? You could look at that. That could be a real problem for you. Or you could frame yourself, steal yourself, get out there on the web and look and see who's out there. And if you keep looking and you dig and you sort of meet people and chat, get conversations going, you'll find what you need. So it's all about gangs being formed, whether you're trying to, to get into somebody else's gang and maybe bring bits of your own gang with that too, or whether you're in the middle of it, starting a whole gang. Whatever it is, it's all about just people getting together and gangs and working. And I found there's a couple of schools of thought to this. Some people don't care and they'll go from job to job and they'll assemble a different team of people from each job. Other people will try and get a family together and ideally that they could just work with yeah. from off into the future. This is the way I'm trying to work it because basically what I want to do is find like, you know, the best people that all get along and, you know, everybody enjoys the process. Moon was really stressful and one of the things that I'm really trying to focus on a bit more when I'm uh, doing subsequent jobs, and especially with archives, trying to enjoy the process because you can get very caught up in the work and you know you can stress about things that maybe you shouldn't. There's always things to stress about. And one of the one of the things that I learned from Moon actually is because it was so stressful and we all had we, none of us had any money, we were all skin and we kept running out of money on the production and we had personal debts and all this stuff was going on. And there's so much work to do and so little time to do it and we were all, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd all get worried about stuff now and again, have little chats about it. And we'd have days and it would be, oh, we'd run out of money, like, you know, that happened to us twice, something bad would happen. And we'd be like, oh, calamity, everything's gone really, really bad. It's all gone, it's all in the toilet, we're screwed, it's over. And then we'd have other days, like, where Sam says yes, like, you know, a couple of weeks before we shoot, it was like really late. And we're like, holy shit, we've got Sam Rockwell. This is amazing. This is the best thing ever. And you'd have these emotional peaks and troughs. Yeah. And the film would try and take you. You'd, basically, you know, I could see a situation happening where we all become bipolar. And I, I just wasn't prepared to let that happen. And so what I started doing was really controlling my emotions like some robot or something. So that when something really bad happened... I would take solace in the fact that bad things have happened before and we will pull in, we'll concentrate, we'll focus and whatever's happening, we'll fix it, we'll make it right. So we don't need to have a calamity or despair or go mental and trash the office because we'll make it right, we'll do that. And if something brilliant happens, not to get too euphoric and start jumping around because um, that's the, the flip side of it. You need to um, sort of try and strike an emotional middle line. And I learned to do that over the course of Moon. Yeah, well, so. I appreciate so much you taking the time. And no, it's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And very welcome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, all you sci-fi fans out there, you might want to check out my daily update sci-fi blog where I will be... What I try and do is just sort of share things that I like that maybe you haven't seen or haven't seen for a while. Um, .com stroke my blog. Um, or follow me on Twitter at Gavrov, G-A-V-R-O-V, and yeah, get involved.
join in the conversation and send me any cool stuff that I might not have seen because uh, it's always a pleasure meeting people on the internet.